Well, I have four o'clock on the dot, and I really want to make the most of your time for coming here <coughs> and being at our APA style workshop. So I think we will go ahead and get started. And any questions that you have as we go along, please don't hesitate to ask, because I really want to make sure that by the time you finish this workshop, you have the information that you need, and maybe we'll learn uh, just a little bit more, not only about APA style, but where to go if you have questions. And I think that that is the biggest thing as much as anything else, and I see some nods of the heads. So I just want to go ahead and introduce myself first. Um, <clears throat> some of you might know me, or maybe you've seen me uh, either over in this or hall, if you're ever over there taking classes, or over here at the library. My name is Cynthia Kane, and I'm a professor, and my official title is Director of Assessment, but a lot of what I do is uh, work as a library liaison for the Departments of Psychology and Counselor Education, and also the School of Library and Information Management. I am going to apologize in advance for the quality of my voice. As you can tell, um, I had a lovely bout, bout last week of laryngitis, and I know about this time last week I thought, I hope I can do this workshop. I may be doing a lot of sign language and a lot of pointing, so hopefully you can hear me and I'll try to project as well as I possibly can. So what you have in front of you is a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if you would like to follow along as we start to get to different links, especially for online help, you are more than welcome to do that and just learn a little bit more. So I'm going to ask a question just before we begin. How many of us in this room, I'm going to include myself, how many of us would consider, to, consider ourselves to be experts when it comes to APA citation style? Not me either. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about my own background. Um, <clears throat> as an undergraduate and graduate student here at Emporia State a long time ago, I actually was an English major. And as an English major, I wound up using the Modern Language Association, the APA style. And with that, uh, the, I, I actually didn't wind up using a lot when it came to APA or anything like that. What I wound up using was, again, the Modern Language Association, MLA style. Now, that was good. I learned how to do that. Then, after I finished my undergraduate and graduate degree in English, I wound up becoming a library science student. So, I entered the library science program here. That was about 25 years ago, and at that time, we didn't have the specific citation style that we used. So, I continued to use the MLA citation style. All very well and good. Well, then, fast forward. I started working here, back at Emporia State, and I started working with a lot of education students and psychology students, and I had to learn very quickly how to use the American Psychological Association style. And that was a big change, because it's just not the same as other citation styles. And I see you sort of nodding your head and thinking, no, it really isn't the same. So what I want to do in this session today is go over a little bit about why APA is the way that it is, and also provide you some links that you may or may not already know about that can help you with some online help whenever you have any questions about how to do citations and then basically how to write in AP style, APA style a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and get started. <coughs> I think one of the biggest things <coughs> that I had to learn uh, when I was learning about APA style is that the American Psychological Association this style is very different. It is designed specifically for scientific research, so it's very different from other citation styles that we may have used before. One of the major differences is that the citations will tend to focus upon the year of the publication. So when you are writing a paper in APA style, when you do your internal citations with the parentheses, you know that generally you'll put the author's last name and then the year, such as Kane 1999 or Smith 2003. And I used to wonder, well, why do you do that with APA? That doesn't really seem very intuitive. Well, I realized that it has to do with why APA is the way that it is. With APA, the focus is upon the currency of the information. And the currency has to do with basically how recently something has been published. 
And that's actually why we focus a little bit more in APA style on the year of the publication. And when I realized that, it made a little bit more sense to me. That's why we do that. <coughs> we still go ahead and include some page numbers for uh, pages of articles or pages of book chapters, but the focus is very much upon the year. The other part that APA tends to focus on is the accuracy of complex materials such as tables and statistics. This is going to make a little bit more sense when I show you one of the online help features that you can do for APA style that actually includes a sample paper. And it shows you how to do an appendix, basically how to cite tables and statistics and everything else. So like I said, this will make a little bit more sense. So <clears throat> this is what basically the American Psychological Association tells us, that the rules of style in scientific writing encourage full disclosure of essential information and allow us to dispense with minor distractions. This is that lovely. That's directly from the American Psychological Association site. So that's why APA style will look the way that it does. <coughs> if you have done any searching in any of our library databases, such as PsycInfo or other databases to find articles, one thing that you will see immediately, and we'll take a look at this in just a second, is that our library research databases will generally have something called a cite feature or citation tools. That will let you click on a record, maybe a reference to a journal article, and it will convert that record into a specific citation style, such as APA or MLA. And when we see the differences, when it has to do with different citation styles, we can kind of see what APA is all about when it's focusing upon the year. So the first one, this is basically the same article, very same article, three different styles, APA, Chicago Manual of Style, and MLA. So what we see with APA is that <coughs> we have the names of the authors, and then right after the names of the authors, you see where that year is? that year in parentheses. So it's focusing upon the year. It's focusing when that specific citation, when that article was actually published. And then we have everything else, the title of the article, the title of the journal, and so forth. We have the same thing happen with the Chicago Manual of Style. This is often used in the social sciences, such as history and philosophy. They will go ahead and list the names of the authors, but then you see that right after the names of the authors again, we have the year of publication. A little bit of a difference with MLA. We have author's names and then the title of the article, the title of the journal, the volume, the issue, and then finally the year of publication. And that is because MLA again is more for humanities disciplines. And in the humanities, when I was an English major, we're not necessarily that concerned when, when, when something was actually published. We're more concerned with the actual information, such as, oh, like a critical review of an author or a critical review of a novel. So again, that's why it looks a little bit different. Same article, three different styles. <coughs> and this is something that may have happened to you at some point or another. Um, I know this has happened to me. And when I work at the reference desk uh, just right here in the library, I answer a lot of questions from students who get a little bit confused about this part. I mentioned that in different databases, there is generally a cite feature or a citation tool. So we'll be looking at this in a little bit with PsycInfo. However, sometimes the information for a citation may not be accurate. Well, what does that mean? It means that when you copy and paste the citation and you submit your paper to your professor and you're really happy because you got it done, you might get a paper back from your professor with a lot of red marks. I see some nods. <laughs> this is incredibly frustrating. It is incredibly frustrating for you as students. And if you don't actually take away anything else from today's session, definitely take this away. Those citation tools are only as good as the information within the database. So that means this is an APA citation that I pulled from the Academic Search Premier database, which we have in our library. And I converted it to APA, and I copied and I pasted it. Oh my, this is not correct. This is not correct at all. The reason that I say it's not correct is that 
when I look at the title of the journal article. In APA style, generally just the first word of the title is capitalized. But look at that. All the other words in that article title are also capitalized. That's because that's the way it appeared in the original database. So I'm still going to have to go back and I'm going to have to do some editing. I will need to take the other words that are capitalized and put them into lowercase in order for those to be current and correct with APA style. That is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It has to do with the information as it appeared in the database. So essentially, even when you do a cite or citation tools in a database, double and triple check those citations because they may or not, may or not be exactly correct. And I'll show you some ways of doing that in a little bit, but that's just sort of a warning. <coughs> so what we're going to do now is look at some of these different links that I've given you. And these links that you have on your handout as well, I hope will serve as good references if you ever have any questions. So how many of you have a copy of the print publication manual of the American Psychological Association? So a couple of you do. That is still the one that you want to go back to because it is the one that is actually approved and published by the American Psychological Association. We have a copy here in our library. So if you're here in William Allen White Library and you're writing a paper and you need to check anything with the publication manual, ask us at the reference desk if you would and we'll be happy to show you our copy. You can't check it out of the library because everybody else wants it too, but you can use it here in the library. But here's one of the problems that happened with that publication manual. Do you see when the publication manual was published? 2009. What has happened since 2009? Yes, a lot of things on the web and social media in particular. Um, <clears throat> it's been absolutely amazing just how fast social media has actually exploded in the last few years. Um, I, I had a Facebook page in 2009. It wasn't very exciting, but I had a Facebook page. I didn't have a Twitter feed. I had never even, you know, been aware of anything like Instagram or Snapchat or anything like that. Well, social media has absolutely exploded in the last few years. That part is not covered in the print publication manual. Now, is it appropriate in a paper to do an APA citation for a Facebook posting? Maybe. It kind of depends. For something scholarly, that's not scholarly in any way, shape, or form. However, it might be that there was a comment, maybe from someone <coughs> who is well-known in the field on somebody's Facebook page, and I might want to quote that. And of course, that's not going to be that scholarly, but it might be something that I would want to include in my paper. I need to know how to cite that in appropriate APA style. I'm going to show you what APA has done since then. So, print publication manual is the one to go back to, but that was published in 2009. <clears throat> what we're going to be doing in just a second is looking at some of these different links. And in particular, we're going to spend some time with the APA style blog. Does that sound familiar? Okay, awesome. You, good. So you used that? Perfect. I'm so glad to hear that. If you've not had a chance to use the APA style blog, this is absolutely wonderful. This is where I can get some updated answers to questions such as how to cite social media and how to do different things. So we're going to look at that in just a second. So the first thing I'm going to start with is something that you may have looked at before. Is anybody familiar with the OWL, the Online Writing Lab at Purdue, a little bit? Okay. Uh, the OWL at Purdue site is probably one of the best online resources that I can give you all. The reason is that <coughs> it's very detailed. It is not sanctioned by the American Psychological Association, but it does give an incredible number of help features and updates for APA style, MLA style and other styles as well. So we're going to spend a little bit of time walking through this. I want to make sure that you're very familiar with this. 
The link that I gave you in your PowerPoint presentation that I went to actually covers from the Allen Purdue site, and I'll scroll over here. It covers some changes and some updates in the sixth edition. But when I scroll back over here, if I click on this link to the right, or pardon me, to the left side, and also I can do this up here on the top, for APA style. These are the resources. I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller so you can see that screen a little bit more. These are the resources that the OWL Online Writing Lab at Purdue has for APA style. So we're going to look at some of these resources. But I want to make sure that you're very familiar with them. So if I click on APA Formatting and Style Guide, I absolutely love this site because I can't remember everything about APA style. There's no way that I can remember. And it's not unusual that I will get a question from a student on how do I cite a web resource, a web page? How do I cite the full text of an article that I find in a database? How do I cite a book chapter? How do I cite a dissertation? Tons and tons of questions out there. The Al at Purdue site will answer a lot of those questions. So if we navigate over here, this will give you, for example, basic information about how to do your in-text citation, such as the author's last name and then the year of publication. It will also tell you, for example, when you need to include the actual page numbers. And again, this is something that's a little bit different from MLA because in MLA style, we always use the page numbers when it comes to in-text citations. You don't always do that. It kind of, sometimes it depends upon what your professor would want. And by the way, <clears throat> if you ever have any specific questions about APA style, if you have a chance to go back to your professor, I strongly encourage you to do that. I can answer very basic questions about APA style, but different professors in different disciplines will have um, particular uh, preferences. So I will usually encourage the students to go back to their professors just to be on the safe side and make sure that you're following what the professor wants. Because there's a lot of variances sometimes. So again, this will tell you how to do short quotations and longer quotations. And if you're doing a summary or a paraphrase <coughs> from a work, it will show you how to do that citing feature as well. Look for the scroll back up here. Because I also wanted to spend a little bit of time showing you probably my favorite part of this site. I love this. So anything you want to know about how to do a citation in APA, this site's going to show you how to do that. So I might not know, for example, how to do a citation for an article. I kind of know, but look at all these wonderful examples they give you. This is just incredible. I can usually find an answer here, and then I can figure out. This is also a fantastic site to go back to when you have done that cite or citation tools feature from uh, a database and you want to proofread it, go to this site. Because this will help you proofread it and it will help you see what to change or what to edit. Just excellent, excellent site. So it's covering magazines, newspapers, <coughs> even letters to the editor, and so forth. If I have a question about how to do electronic sources, again, I can go to this link. I don't know if you all have ever encountered this. Um, have you all ever encountered anything called a DOI? Okay, I see some nods. Um, a DOI is called is a digital object identifier. So what does that mean? It basically means that it's a number that's going to give you supposedly a permanent link to the full text of an article. Um, 
different professors have different guidelines about including DOIs. If you're doing a citation from the site info database, and we'll look at that in just a second as well, the DOI is included. If you are pulling out a citation from another database like Academic Search Premier or another one that's a little bit more general, the DOI is not going to be included. I have found that some professors really don't care about the DOIs, they're okay with that. Others might be a little bit pickier. So I would check with your professor if there's something, if, if the professor really wants to have that DOI actually included. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. And I get a lot of questions about this as well. So ask your professor. Because that can get kind of confusing. <coughs> but again, this is how to cite an article from a database. Electronic books. If you have a Kindle, this is how to do a citation for a Kindle book. Just a lot of different things here. So when we scroll back up, again, this will give you some links on how to do other citations for your reference list. There's one more thing I want to show you on here, though, that I really love when it comes to this site. There's a link that's called APA Sample Paper. And when I click on this link, oh, I love this so much. This is a sample paper in APA style. And the great thing about this is that it's going to walk you through the process of how to format your paper in APA. I really, really like this. It shows you how to do a running head, what the title page should look like. As we scroll down, <coughs> if you need to do an abstract for your paper, it shows you how the abstract should be structured. I mean, it just basically tells you everything. What the rest of the paper should look like. And I'm going to scroll down kind of quickly here to the end. The references list, which is what that's called in APA style, it's not called a bibliography or a works cited page, it's references. It shows you how that should be formatted and what that should look like as well. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier. If you have any appendices, uh, maybe something like a sample test or something like that in your paper, it'll show you what the appendices should look like as well. That's probably one of my favorite parts about this site. Because I can go back and say, okay, this is what my paper is supposed to look like. And again, when you're on the APA formatting a style guide site or the Allot Purdue site, if you just scroll down and click on APA sample paper, that's where you can get that. So this is one way of finding the information that you need. There's a bunch of other things, too. So we'll go back over here. <coughs> the American Psychological Association <coughs> has a link for frequently asked questions. Um, but I actually want to spend a little bit more time with you today showing you the APA style blog. So we're going to go to this one, blog.apastyle.org. And this is the one that I was mentioning just a few minutes ago. This blog is from the American Psychological Association. So the great thing about this is it is sanctioned by APA. So I know it's reliable and it's accurate. And it's updated basically almost every day by people who work for, for APA that are experts when it comes to the style and any types of questions. It's kind of fun to read. So, Here's an article from March 21st, How to Cite a Chapter Written by Someone Other Than the Book's Authors. Well, that can happen. Just really weird stuff that sometimes you're just not quite sure how to cite. But let's say that I go over here and I can search the blog. I want to search for social media. article here is from 2016. They're talking about how to cite a TED Talk. 
I love this one, how to cite a hashtag. <laughs> so I might need to do that. It's going to walk me through that process. And they're talking a little bit even how to cite a smartwatch. And with this article, how to cite social media in APA style. So this is actually covering how to do Twitter and Facebook and at that time Google Plus. So there's personal communications, in-text citations. That's how I can cite a tweet. So if I have a tweet from Twitter, I know how to cite that as well. Facebook status update individual author. I might need to do that. I just find that to be really interesting. And yet that's not all that you can do with the APA style blog. If you have any other questions, you can search by categories or you can put in a search. You can look at recent posts, citing a test database, and then any comments as well. So I tend to go to the APA style blog when I am faced with a question that I just cannot find the answer to, if I'm just really stuck. And the chances are very good that I can find at least one article, if not more, that will help me. And again, since this is from the American Psychological Association, I feel more confident about recommending that to other students and other faculty, that it is something that is verified and accurate. So have some fun with that one. I really like that. When we go back down here, <coughs> I've showed you already the APA formatting and style guide, so we have that here. Uh, we talked about the frequently asked questions. I do have also at the bottom here, this is a basic APA style guide that is here at Emporia State University in the library. I actually wrote this one. Um, use this as a very basic guide. It is not comprehensive in any way, shape, or form. I really designed it for any quick questions that you might have. So if you need, again, a quick, uh, basically just a quick refresher of how to cite a periodical, or book chapters, or dissertations and theses, go ahead and check out this one. Again, it's not going to give you the complete information, but it's good for just some kind of quick information, and that's why I wrote it this way. Um, I'm going to put in a quick plug, by the way. If you are available to come back next week at this time at 4 p.m., um, I will be teaching, probably back here in the classroom again. I will be teaching um, a free bibliographic software program called Zotero. And this is one of my favorite things to teach. I love teaching this. Zotero is a way that you can download citations, keep them organized in collections or folders, so you can keep your research separate according to different research projects. But then it will let you actually link to the full text of articles offline. And it will let you convert those citations into APA style and it will alphabetize them. Just wonderful. It's just, just like magic. I get excited about this because um, I am old enough now that this was not around when I was writing my research papers. And so this kind of stuff really, I, I just, I, I'm just fascinated by what we can do now. So if you are able to come back next week at 4 p.m. here at the library, I'll be teaching some tarot. If not, as you see, these are going to be recorded and they, and they will be made available on the Graduate School homepage. But I did have a link here for Zotero tutorials. And I've also recorded on here some different videos that you can use to learn about Zotero as well. But again, you can use this guide that I wrote that's just a very basic guide as well. If you are, <clears throat> if you have any time, any free time, which you don't really have these days, but if you have any free time, this is actually a link that is from the American Psychological Association. Basics of APA Style Tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to apply some basic rules of APA style. For in-depth guidance on style, and for comprehensive information on publishing in the social and behavioral sciences, we urge you to buy the publication manual of the American Psychological Association, 6th edition. Where various elements of APA style are described, chapter and section numbers are given to tell you where more details can be found, 
in the publication manual. I'll go ahead and stop that now. That link that I have uh, in your handout will take you directly to this tutorial. And if you are ever interested in just sitting down and you have a little bit of time, you might want to watch this tutorial. I have done this and it's taught me some things that I just didn't necessarily know about before. You can also navigate over here if you don't want to watch the entire tutorial if you don't have time because it's about 20 minutes. When I scroll down here, you see that you can actually go to specific parts of the tutorial to learn a little bit more about different things. Reducing bias in language, for example, uh, this is something that is a huge thing with APA and it should be a, just basically a huge thing, period. APA is very, very careful about how things are phrased so that we're not biasing anything according to gender or race or anything like that. And still, so that particular part is a good way of sort of walking through that process and learning how to write in that way. So there's just a lot of different things here in this tutorial. And like I said, you can just skip to the specific part or parts that relate a little bit more to your information need. But I did want to show you that. And again, that's the link that I gave you. So if you just go directly to that link uh, from your handout, you'll be able to see that as well. So I mentioned a little bit about Zotero. Um, <clears throat> do any of you use any software programs that help you organize? What do you use? I use Zotero and EasyBib and then the citation function in Oh, awesome. Yeah. So you've used, as you said, you use EasyBib and then Zotero and then the citation feature in Microsoft Word. That's incredibly handy. So have you ever used any? Okay. Um, they are, as I mentioned, with Zotero and then with, with, with other ways, they are really, really good ways of organizing your information a little bit more and then doing some conversions into different citation formats. Um, there is another one that I've been playing with, and it's called RefMe. I'll probably talk a little bit about this next week during the Zotero tutorial as well, but I do have a link for you here. That works a little bit the same way. Um, one thing that RefMe does is it actually works with different uh, browsers. Um, it is very it is web based, so it actually works really well with Google Chrome if you use that, and it works with other browsers. So Tarot works with the Firefox browser, but you can actually do connectors or extensions, so it will work with Google Chrome as well. Yeah, so I'll, be, I'll show that to you. Yeah, because it's pretty good. I, I use Google Chrome. I really don't use Firefox. But I'll show that next week as well, if you're able to make it or, again, watch the recording. Um, so again, both of those will, will uh, let you download citations. So Tero actually will also integrate with Microsoft Word. So there's a way that you can pull your citations from Zotero into Microsoft Word when you're doing your in-text citations. And then it'll go ahead and help, help do, do that um, citing for you. So, and we'll look, look a little bit about that next week as well. And I should say too, if you can't make it next week or if you have any questions about what we're talking about now, that's why I've given you my information there on the handout. You can always email me at ckane one at emporia.edu. If you ever want to set up an individual appointment with me to learn a little bit more about APA style or Zotero, please do this. Um, and for those of you that are watching the recording, if you email me and if you're a distance education student, I also have Zoom set up on my computer and I can do uh, basically a real-time research appointment with you so we can share our screens back and forth. So, and that's available to anybody as well. So if you're watching this tutorial, please consider that as an option. But again, we'll just kind of be going over that next week. So I wanted to go in. I'm going to escape this here. And let's do some searching. <coughs> you probably, I'm sure that you already know this as graduate students or advanced students. Um, there's a lot of different ways of getting to the library's webpage. One quick way is to just go to library.emporia.edu. If you're already in campus, there's a link to the libraries and archives page from there. And if you are at the Emporia State University website, you can just scroll down and you can click on the link for libraries and archives. So any of those will work. And we will get rid of this. 
And by the way, I'll do a little plug for the library here. So I always have to do this. Um, <coughs> if you're at the library's webpage, and this Ask Us or Chat With Us is online, that is a way of chatting live with the librarian. And we do that at the reference desk. So if you ever have a question uh, just about how to search or a question about research, you can chat with us live whenever that's on, and we're happy to help answer a question. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get in touch with us. So that's just a quick plug. <coughs> so we're going to go back up here, and I'm going to click on databases. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go around and ask each of you uh, what your major field of study is, so I have no, know a little bit more. So what are you majoring in? Uh, instructional Design and Technology. Awesome. Yeah, instructional Design and Technology, IDT. That's great. Okay. And what, what is your major? IDT. IDT? That's great. Art Therapy. Art Therapy. Oh, wonderful. I work with, with a lot of your faculty. That's fantastic. Okay. And what is your major? Physics. Physics. Okay. This is a really good... Uh, diverse group. I'm delighted to see this. Um, the reason I wanted to ask is that I didn't want to make any assumptions. You probably already know this, but just in case, if you are at our library research databases, and if you click on all subjects, this is where you can go to your subject or your major and find all of the different databases that we have that relate to that field of study. So we have one specifically for art therapy. And as I scroll down, I have one for the broader field of education. And I have one for physical sciences, so I can look in that as well. IDT is always an interesting one. It's kind of like my field of library and information science, even though we're up there. I know that in your case, you're going to borrow a lot from education but also from, you know, anything dealing with computer design or, you know, usability and so forth. So you might be drawing from a lot of different areas, which is both good and bad. That can be sometimes a challenge. So if I chose, basically, ah, uh, let's see, since I don't have psychology, I'm not going to do that one. Um, let's do, do you have art therapy? Let's go ahead and go into art therapy. And I'm going to do a couple of comparisons because this will sort of illustrate what happens in different databases. So art therapy, we often use the PsycInfo database, but we use other databases as well that might relate to art, like art full text. And then we have another one that's called Psychology and Behavioral Sciences Collections. So I'm going to show you what can happen in two different databases when I'm dealing with APA citations? So I've gone into PsycInfo, and if I have a choice in a database, I always go into an advanced search because that will let me narrow and focus my search much more specifically. So in the PsycInfo database, I might be interested in, actually this is a topic that one of my students is working on right now, I might want to know about the use of art therapy with veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. So I'm going to build a search here. And I usually limit my search to the abstract of an article, because then my words will be a little bit more specific. They'll be appearing in the abstract. So I'm going to do art therapy. If you have a phrase uh, that you're working like maybe usability testing or something like that, if you put it in double quotation marks like you do in Google or another search engine, that will force the database to search that as a phrase, and you're going to get references that will be a lot more accurate. So that's just sort of a tip. So let's do art therapy and I'm going to do PTSD. You can limit databases to just peer-reviewed scholarly journal articles. You can limit to more recent if you want. And that's about all that I'm going to do right now because I just want to fill up some samples for you to take a look at. So I have 25 results. And some of these will have a link to a full text of an article. Others will not. But 
this is what I can do in the site info database. If I start clicking on records or references that look interesting and go to the site feature, which this database has, this will pull up the citation in the APA format. When I was talking about the DOI a few minutes ago, so this first one is an example of one that did have the DOI number. It has a digital object identifier number, so it's there. But as you see, not all of these have them, so it just sort of depends. But basically what happened here is that I could copy and paste I'll show you something that happened automatically here. I could copy, or I could email or print, but I'm just going to copy these right now. what happened here is that when I did those citations, it put them automatically in alphabetical order. So that's kind of nice. So that's a good way of getting a running list going of your citations and you can keep adding to those. Well, that works very nicely with PsycInfo. However, let's go back here. And I'm going to pull up another database called Psychology and Behavioral Sciences Collection. This is from a different place, so this is a totally different database. And because it's a different database, when I go to advanced search, I'm going to do my same search, abstract art therapy, and double quotation marks. And PTSD. And that kind of gave me another suggestion. It gave me a total of four results, but that's okay. That's something that I can start with. Now, depending on, again, what the record looks like, I can go into this one. And in this particular database, my site feature would be over here, so I can click on site again. I have a lot of different possibilities. And there's the one again that I can copy and paste, but then proofread that just to make sure that it's okay. So every database is going to work a little bit differently, but most databases now will offer that site feature, so that can be a way. You can actually, in many databases too, um, set this up so that it emails you the citation in APA format plus the full text of articles if it is available. So that's another nice feature that a lot of databases offer as well. I'm going to go back over here. And at this point, let's we'll swap this. Okay. At this point, what questions do you have that I might be able to address? I know sometimes it's kind of hard to think of questions until you're actually writing something. Well, just 
to do APA, then why would we take out page numbers? Right. For right. this particular that was that is incredibly confusing, and the question is, when do you not use page numbers when you're doing in-text citations for APA style? That is a great question to ask, because I, I, I get that all the time. Um, let's go back for just a second, and I am going to go back to, actually, one place where that is addressed. It's not going to be totally clear, but it is addressed. Okay, I'm going to go back to the APA Alec Purdue style guide. And let's go back to in-text citations the basics. And we're going to be doing, I'll, I'll look another place too. But if I remember correctly, I want to say, see this is talking about using some page numbers. Okay. See this is actually showing some page numbers for long quotations. And also for short quotations, but then when you get down here to the summary or paraphrase, if it's a summary or paraphrase, it's saying APA guidelines encourage you to also provide the page number, although it is not required. So I'm reading that as not having to use it with a summary or paraphrase, but encouraging one to use it with the short quotations or the long quotations. However, let's go back to a page style blog. And I'm going to type in page numbers. And here is an article on when and how to use page numbers. And see, they're talking again about using the page numbers with short quotations, maybe not necessarily with paraphrases. What I have found is that what you ran into is not unusual because I have found that often it will depend upon the professor or the faculty member. Um, I have read articles that don't have the page numbers. I've read articles that do have the page numbers. I, I have to say that sometimes it's just almost a flip of the coin as much as anything else. According to APA style, again, the way that I'm reading this, we do include our page numbers with short direct quotations and long direct quotations, but the summary or the paraphrase could be optional. But that's according to APA, and somebody else may have a different interpretation of, of that. I know that doesn't sound terribly helpful, but I'm, I, I can just at least go back to what APA would say. Yeah. It's ter it is confusing. So See, and my interpretation would be the same way. With, with lengthy quotations as well as short direct quotations, I'm going back to my to my, my MLA training, and my MLA training tells me I want that exact page number because I want to be able to go back. I, I may want to look up that quotation because I think it's really interesting. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to find it. So that comes from my MLA training as well. So I can see with a summary or a paraphrase that you're doing maybe more of a global summary of several pages and so you wouldn't be including that. Or it might be different pages in different parts of, of the book. Again, that would be my interpretation according to APA style. So that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Other questions? I really appreciate you all coming today, and I hope that when you leave, maybe you'll know a little bit more or walk away with a little bit more information than you had before. Um, I do have, uh, at the back, back here, I think just about everybody grabbed it, the handout. But there's also an evaluation form. If you could take a few minutes to fill out the evaluation form, I would really appreciate that because we want to continue doing these workshops, and any feedback that we get is really helpful. So thank you very much.